action. Uh, Melissa Ford, she's on the Joe Budden podcast. According to her, she said a man should never, ever address a woman's outfit at all. Like you should never speak on a, a woman's outfit. You mean attire. a video vixen said that? Yes, Melissa Ford. Yes. You're a video. Well, you, look at what you're doing. Look, a woman doesn't want you to critique what they use as an asset. Coochie is an asset. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I got to understand what you're Body saying. is an asset. So yes, it's yes, like, yes. I don't want you to limit what I can use to gain access. If you have me cover up something that will garner me attention, I don't want you speaking on it. Think about the things that women don't want you to talk about. They don't want you to talk about their right to, to have a baby or not. They don't want you to talk. They, they want to. They don't want you to talk about what they're wearing. They don't want you. They don't want you to govern hey, how they carry themselves. I'm gonna ask you a question. This Go is, ahead. I think this is the most important question ever for any man to ever ask. Why do I care about what a woman thinks? I don't. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be ugly or anything like that. But like, what you think is not going to stop my productivity. No. It's not going to stop my purpose. It's not going to take me off my journey. And as long as I keep building, I'm going to get like, hey, right now, uh, the coochie is in such abundance and the price is so low that I can. Man, I got my pick of the litter. I ain't got to worry about what none of you think because y'all are just talking for social media. As soon as you're off of social media and direct encounter, you finna do what I, I want you to do or you're going to get away from There's me. There's a caveat there. What's Let up? me say this. A woman who is loyal to me, a woman who wants to see me get somewhere, is that, I is do that care. I, I think they exist. <laughs> I do care what she thinks. Why? Because... A woman who cares about you, women are naturally self-serving. So a woman who cares about you and wants to see you go somewhere is going to make opinions or have opinions about you that's going to serve her best. So if she's saying something like, hey, maybe you should go to the gym. I want you to be healthier. Things like that. That matters because if you're a healthy man, if you can get out every day and work for her, that's going to suit her best. So she wants you to be healthy. I want you to. I want to agree with you so bad, man. Like... You can encourage me better than she can encourage me because I know that you know what it takes for us to be strong. I don't know why she wants me to be strong. Everything that I do benefits her. But me and you working together, me and you getting strong, it benefits everybody. I, 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 I'm on the fence with that. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm listening. I think women are an Achilles heel of a man. No, a woman can approach you and talk to you in a way that I can't. Now, you can take what I say of value. We respect each other. We're friends. Yes, yes. But there's a way a woman can deliver a message to a man in such a way that another man can't, especially if he's sleeping with her and being intimate with her. And the, the only reason why I threw that caveat in there is because when I said I don't care what a woman thinks, yeah. I think it's a certain woman's mind, I think. Overall, their overall idea, I don't. Like this whole dread, their, their ideas of what they should be wearing out in public. Like you really think that you should be in a place. First off, if you're anywhere with your ass out and you're and you're just half naked, I don't think you respect yourself. It's my position that we're acquiescing to a less powerful person. Like we're sitting here listening that. to women tell us what we're supposed to do. And she can't help me do what I need to do. Right. Like why, why in the hell are you telling me what I should be doing when you're not assisting me to go do the thing? Now, if I, if you want to be of service, you want to help me build, then I understand. But I, what's the word they use in the manosphere? They say hypergamous. Hypergamous. You know what I'm saying? The best option possible. Right. Bro, as soon as I go through six months of depression, she might or might not be here. Here's my question. What's up? You wearing, and I think women should answer this, and, and I know y'all tune in a lot. Y'all are always in the comments, and so <laughs> you get in the comments. Please, hit, this is a question I need y'all women to answer. Who are you helping by being half half naked in public? Like, who are you benefiting? They have they've been lied to. They've been hoodwinked. Woman, thou are loosed, okay? You out here running around half naked, and you think that's cool. You think that my sexuality is my power. Your modesty is your power. Your chastity is your power. That's what makes you powerful because there are, there are an abundance of women in the world, and there are only a select few women who choose to be modest. They try to get Jonah Hill. Oh, dog. I've been watching that. First off... I really, and I kind of saw the text thread. I didn't see like the entire text thread, but I think I saw it. On, it might've been on the shade room or TMZ or something like that. But I mean, this guy wasn't even being disrespectful to this lady, bro. He told her, I am an A-list celebrity. And when I go out and I'm spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for whatever we're doing, I cannot have my friends look up and see your booty on Instagram. Oh, yeah. 
Like that's they looking at me like I'm a sucker, like I'm a clown. I'm an A-list actor in in Hollywood, and you want to go hang out and be gnarly. I'm a surfer chick, and then two years later, you want to post their text threads, bro. These women are out here acting terror. It's scary. That's why. That's why I asked the question. Why do I care about what a woman thinks? Because most of these women, a lot of these women, are solely behaving out of clout and for attention. Hey, there are wives and there are there everyone else and everyone else is whores. So if you're not a wife, you're going to want to put your ass out. You're going to want to put your boobs out. You're going to want to behave like a whore. A man does not want a wife a whore. I know you believe in marriage. I do. What's the purpose of marriage today? The purpose of marriage today is the purpose that has always been is that a woman is a helpmate to the man who has a vision. Simple. That's simple. Okay. And a legacy in a family. Like without legislation, without any type of legal protection, they have all the advantage. I know that when me and my ex-wife were going through hard times, mm -hmm. I was living in fear for like two or three years. I was like, I'm going to lose half my pension. I'm going to lose half my 401k. I'm about to pay child support. What the hell am I going to do once this this financial hurricane hits my life? Well, I'm going to say this because I'm someone who's been been through the divorce process I think it's also designed for men to be very afraid because I will admit you have to fight. Like it's very expensive to fight, but you have to fight, especially for your kids and, and your children. You need to, um, but you have to fight. You, but I'm a it, feminist though. It, it, but in Texas, look, in Texas, it's a communal <laughs> state anyway. So I'm going to tell you how it works in Texas. What's it's up? communal, meaning that you get half our stuff too. So, All I'm saying is though, yeah. I'm, I'm a for real feminist. Right. Like I believe in actual equality, not no perceived equality. Men operate based on like uh, ancient expectations, mm -hmm. unwritten laws. And with unwritten laws, like the, this man code that we abide by, right. ain't nobody else abiding by this man code. Women ain't abiding by no woman code. They're going to get legislation and they're making sure that, that they can come and get my stuff. Well, you know why? You know how you defend against that? And, and unfortunately, we have to learn through trial and error is you got to pick the right one to pick the kitties oh up. Goodness. You know, that's 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 you know, that's a great line from Big Boy, you know what I'm saying, from Outcast. But at the end of the day, choosing the right mate is like really a life or death situation. Can and if you, you can you find ahead. the right mate when they have legal like I I've known some incredible women, mm -hmm. some very wonderful women. But as soon as they, because women are emotional people, human beings are emotional, but a woman will use her emotions to, out of spite, to come and get you. I think you can choose the right mate. I think this is what I've learned. First off, I'm going to just, I'm going to just be real square with you and What's say up? this right now. Um, as a man, I really don't think we're capable of even choosing a, or even thinking about choosing a long-term mate. Until we're post thirty five, <laughs> I think. Why I think, is that? But there, there's a few things. I think that in our thirties is when we become more established. Right. So there are certain things we aren't really uh, afraid of in terms of money. I think we get more established by this time. You've probably lost some money. You've you've had some tough times, and you've you've re, you've bounced back. Maybe you're going through them right now, and you're about to bounce back. So you understand. I, I think you're, the power I, in the dollar. I think that you're highlighting the fact that women are a liability. And, and until, until a woman is definitely a liability. Until I'm financially stable, until I'm mentally stable, emotionally stable, she might tear me down as I'm building. Yep, women, women, women are most definitely a liability, <laughs> and you got to choose carefully. Anything that you have to spend money on, anything that you have to take a risk on, is a liability. And you, you your children are liabilities. Like your family is a liability. Like you have to Ooh. spend money and invest in this family. My children are supposed to be an asset. Like historically, if I have three sons, my three sons are not only going to go and, and cut the grass and mow the fields and plant the crops and plow and, and plow the uh, fields they're gonna they're going to be able to protect me also in my older age I have an army and these people are supposed to defend me bro it hurt my feelings so much that my ex-wife told my oldest son that when he was 13 he had the option to see me or not she actually told oh, him wow <laughs> and so when you, when you give a child that type of yeah. power it put a serious strain on that relationship because with her, he can do and say whatever. And if she does try to reprimand him, she can't do anything to him. The issues with mothers is they and they want the children to internalize the issue that they have with you. And they want the children to do the same thing. And what they don't understand is the type of deceit, the type of hate, the type of ill character that they're instilling in children when they do that. It's best to have both your parents involved. It's best to say, hey, we will co-parent and govern this child, this child accordingly. You, but 
bitter women often do that. You're taking my greatest asset that God gave me and turning it into my adversary. Right. I'm like, this is my general, and now I got a damn lieutenant on the other side operating against me. I'm looking like, hey, is this what you accomplished this? This is what your behavior and your rhetoric created. But they're the weaker vessel. Like, what I just said will go over so many women's head. They will not even understand what I just talked about when we talk about co-parenting and good parenting. Women will operate just like children from their emotions. That's how, why they dress like that. Everything that they do, they operate off based off of how they feel. And they come in with this attitude like they know what they're talking about. They try, they want to be in these positions of authority and leadership, but they they aren't built like that at all. I'm look, I keep on telling you, I'm a feminist. And so if your idea is better than my idea, I'm I'm, I'm listening to you. Tell me what we're going to do. Tell me how we're going to do it. Tell me when we're going to do it. And if it fails, hold accountability for it. But if you ain't willing to do that, then please assist me as I accomplish my goals because I'm on a mission, baby. Yeah. I mean, I think this podcast is so important. Because not only are we telling the truth about the world around us in politics, but when it comes to the male and female dynamic, you have two men uh, who are really talking about this in such a way that we're helping men and instructing women because women need instruction. Like if you if you're a woman and you tune into this channel, you're going to learn, you're going to gain from it. If you're a man, you're definitely going to grow. But we need to talk to our women in a manner to teach them and help them grow. You are the pupil. You are the insubordinate. You are not the leader. You are not the teacher. Uh, you need to be taught so you therefore can go forth and teach. And the issue with our society right now is we have women taking a whole of society and controlling it and leading it as though that's what God designed them to do. And with, that's just not the case. With no standards. No I've standards. seen so many black female politicians in authority. They ask them, what's a woman? And they say a person who identifies as a, as a woman. Um, that's unreasonable. And, and in Supreme Court hearings, they're saying the exact same rhetoric. And I'm like, how in the world is this possible? You're a whole woman who creates children and you'll let a man come and dominate your space. That's not that's illogical. Bonus hole. What do you think about that? <laughs> it's a bonus hole. So they, they so they, so so we won't offend people who were not born with the vagina. We're gonna call the vagina a bonus hole. A bonus hole. Like we playing Mario or something, nigga. Power. That's up. a coochie. Ding, 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 ding. That's a coochie, man. That's a coochie. That's a that's a that's a vagina. That's you know. Hey, look. I said this already. The world is on fire, and we cannot put out the flames. But we only get to this place when men choose to listen to women who say that my feelings matter. And so when a woman says my feelings matter, then you can have a man who says my feelings also matter. Right. And then he says my feelings are that I'm a woman. And she says, you know what? His feelings are valid. And you're like, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. If it's, man, in every male dominated space, that's not allowed. And we got to do this thing. And if you don't do this thing, you're going to get away from us because we're working over here. You were talking about, oh, I hurt my nail. If you don't use your muscles and your testosterone to accomplish this job, then, then you have no purpose to the group. I wonder what uh, what's the st statistics on uh, transgender remorse, like the surgery? I'm sure. I'm sure the st statistics are very high. I saw this video the other day of a woman. Well, a transgender man. So obviously, a woman who trans tr transitioned to a man who was depressed because he she realized how lonely it is being a man. This was something she wasn't used to. Cause Everything you yeah. just done right now was a tongue twister. You trying to figure out how to acknowledge a person who doesn't know how to acknowledge themselves. It, yeah, because it's <laughs> like, I don't even know what this, I don't even know, and I also want the listener, the viewer to see like, okay, he'll, I, I don't even know how to explain this, but hey, it was a chick. Who's now identifying as a man saying, hey, it's hard being a man because it's very lonely. You. I respect yeah. every person. Right. But how in the world can I love and respect the person who does not love and respect themselves? And if you take a knife to yourself for any reason, like little girls, when they're going through the, 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 the ideations and they're, they're slicing their wrists, like that right there, you say, that's a problem. But then you have a, a same 16 year old, 13 year old girl go get a double mastectomy and you say you're living your truth. Man, that's insane. If you have to cut yourself to be the thing that you think that you are, then that, you're not that. Is that I, too much? No, I, I think it's real. And I think that this is all going to be the fall of this country. And I, I, I really like I don't think we really are paying attention to this. I really don't think we are. I think we're so caught up in social media. I think we're so caught up in the bubble that we don't see this perversion this over or overly feminine society we're living in is going to help us crumble. And it's sad. And black people are, I think black folks are exacerbating the problem because 
we were saying racism matters. Me being black matters. I know that we've had grave injustices, but that's a political issue. And we have to unite politically and have a political agenda on how we get reparations for the uh, the atrocities that happened to us. I just can't sit here and every time a person has a microaggression, I sit there and say to hurt my feelings and you're racist and you should be banned and canceled. Like it's the exact same thing as women saying that because I'm a man and I'm strong, then then my strength is toxic. See, you said something key because even after this affirmative action ruling, I was saying, really, black people, the only way you get out of this pinch is to unite politically and go after reparations to elevate your people. Otherwise, any argument that you've ever had before is going to get lost in the sauce. And it's only going to get worse as you get diluted by these other movements that don't really matter. And you know what our biggest issue is? There are no men speaking up. There are only black women yelling and, and talking for everyone else. I have to clarify this. Uh, the Democratic Party has taken victimhood and used it to get votes. Yep. Black people, you are powerful. Women, you are exceedingly powerful. You create life. And as soon as you embrace your power and denounce victimhood, we can have a political agenda. But as long as you keep, like that. as long as we keep having this, oh, I'm the biggest victim. If I'm black and I'm a woman and I'm gay all simultaneously, <laughs> I'm the I'm the most victimized person in America. And I'm like, that's irrational. <laughs> Just be a powerful person. Because that's exactly what's happening, dog. That is exactly what's happening. And it's just sad. Uh, everybody wants to be free to their own detriment. Yeah, this liberal ideology that's destroying America. Without any standards, then anyone can just do anything. And then you have people who say that they're a minor attracted people. Like, what? What? And these, they're pushing this agenda, and, and anyone who says that they disagree with a person having a relationship with a child, there's a movie called, dang on it, it's something like Pizza, something Pizza. Oh, I forgot the name of this movie. But it's a 25-year-old woman who has a relationship with a 15-year-old boy, and they romanticize it. And at the end, it's a happily ever after. Seriously? Seriously. Uh, it's, and it even won awards. No. <laughs> and, and so somehow they're trying to normalize this idea in our minds when there are standards in life. And when you deviate from these standards, then everyone just does whatever and we destroy our whole society. You know, I think the only way we ever wake up to this is to go through hardship. And I think that's in our near future. I think that's in society's near future that we will definitely see an implosion here because um, um all this crud and mud that we've just brought into our society. I mean, it's ridiculous the things that you see, uh, I want to say on TV, but it's not TV. It's in the palm of your hand. You know what I'm saying? Um, in the palm of your hand. It, yeah, it's in the palm of your hand. I mean, every everything we look at on a daily, how many of us, and I wonder, how many of you out there are actually turning on the TV? I bet you're not. I bet you the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is check your phone or Start you're scrolling, scrolling and you're programming yourself every day with a Habitual, bunch of nonsense. Man. Yeah. So you're just changing your behavior. So I think the only way we ever really get out of this is uh is to go through the result of what this is going to cause, which is mayhem. Do you know who's really benefiting from all this nonsense? Strong men. Hey, yeah. Usher, when he at his concert, there's a woman who sits in that seat every single concert. Uh, where Kiki Palmer was sitting at, if it's not Kiki Palmer, it's going to be somebody else. It's going to be somebody else. So every night he has a girl who is willing to show him his cheeks. And so a person like Usher, he's like, hey, girl, where would ever do whatever? I'm going to have 365 different pieces Every every year, <laughs> hey now who's the who's the chick that hopped in her man's lap? Oh, uh, that was uh, uh, he used to play for the Lakers, and she's a Kyle, model. Kyle Kuzma. Let's give her a round. Winnie of Winnie Harlow. That's they, what that's what you're supposed to do. You they, need to hop in your hey. They call her two tone. Yeah, <laughs> she fine though. <laughs> hey, that's that's you. Hey, you supposed to hop in your man lap. When something like that goes down, no man wants to see his woman. Kyle Kuzma just signed a contract for a hundred million dollars. Hey, she better hop in that lap. <laughs> hey, stop playing. No, no, no man <laughs> wants to see his woman half naked, mesmerized by another man. No, no, no man wants to see his woman half naked around anybody in the public. Why is that? Why can't we say that? No woman who values herself should want herself to be out half naked. She should know that she is exceptionally valuable. 
But as soon as you degrade yourself, then you just become a free for all for everyone in the market. Like for me, since I ha- I, I believe they have the ability to, to maneuver around women. And so as long as y'all want to misbehave, then I'm just going to be a naughty boy. <laughs> and as soon as the world starts to crumble, strong men but uh, get together, ex-military people get together, get some guns, defend themselves, and we just mow off all the weak people. Say goodbye. We're still powerful and you're still weak. Democracy works for people who are not strong. Will Kiki Palmer be able to do that at 70 years old? She won't be able to do it at at, at 35. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I think women don't understand. There's an expiration date to your body. Like, you can't do that forever. And if you make that the central part of who you are, then you're really putting a timestamp on anything that you value. Like, I I don't really understand that. See Diana Ross's daughter. Man, she's a gorgeous about, uh, woman. Uh, 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 what's her name? But uh, she's not able to receive direction, and so she's under no man's protection. She's just out here bad. Because if I can't correct you, I can't protect you. Man, if I at all look right now, any man, if your woman has to disagree with you or wants to argue with you or belittle you in any type of way, just mm-hmm. get away from her. I, I thank you for the cookies. I'm gone. You got to be with somebody that's going to listen to your instruction, but you have to have some good instruction to give. So you can't forget that. You can't just be talking nonsense, but you have to be with a woman that is truly going to be an agreeable most of the time. She can't be somebody that's just cantankerous. You made that caveat. Like if, if a woman is sleeping with me, then you got to take my instruction, period. Yeah. Like, because, because you're vulnerable. You're putting right. yourself in a vulnerable situation and you believe in this D. All right. You pray. You pray at the altar of D every time you want to come and give me fellatio. Understand that as you submit sexually, you have to also submit mentally. And if we're going to fail, we're going to fail on my own accord. You know what else is crazy? Everybody was talking about, well, Kiki isn't married. Kiki isn't married. So when do we be cool with having babies with folk we not married with? So he was good enough to have a baby with, but not good enough to protect her and tell her what to wear, not to wear in public. Like women are foolish. Absolutely. Women if, if that's the standard, if if me uh, having a relationship with you requires me to to be financially uh, stable, emotionally stable, and all these things, but you have my baby, then I'll just go have thirty babies and deal with it. <laughs> I, I think we we talk we we do talk a lot about marriage. But one of the things that we don't really also like one of the things that we leave off the table with marriage or just two people coming together and decide they're going to be in a committed relationship is children. When you have bastard children out here because you just want to be having kids all willy nilly or you want to have a baby because you think he's like an ornament, you really don't understand how much you're adding to a destructive society. Like you're taking people who won't be in a in any type of balance that don't won't have any real type of um, guidance and you're putting them in society to deal with the rest of us. But I'm a feminist and I believe in absolute equality. And so if you have the autonomy to do whatever you want, then I do too. But see, you sleep with 30 dudes and you just got 30 dudes humping on you and you might get pregnant one time. When I knock off 30 women, I got 30 babies. What's up? I'm the baby pappy. <laughs> if you want to play, we can play. And I think if men decide to play this game and play it all the way out, then women are going to get the consequences they deserve. And men are going to get all the children and all the power they deserve. I definitely think we got to stop procreating with these whores. Like, we, we, you got to get a wife. Like, like stop procreating with a woman who does not want to do what you say, who, who's going to dress the way she wants to dress. Because I can also tell you this, too. Those children, especially if she has girls, are going to act like her. So you really have to st- – we have to be very careful with who we decide to put these babies in. How can we get a wife when these women are being programmed? Like, when I say programmed, I mean Instagram, TikTok, social media is programming these women – no matter how you're hypnotized, I don't care what you think or how you think. If you spend, if you look at your screen screen time at the end of the day and you got seven hours of screen time, you've been allowing someone to hypnotize you for seven hours, okay? And you take yeah. that over seven days, all, man, 50 hours a week of you being hypnotized by someone else's ideas and you ain't got none of your own. Damn, I guess most men are going to have to be passport bros. <laughs> <laughs> but they got Instagram in the Philippines, yeah, too. They do. <laughs> <laughs> the girl in the Philippines is aspiring for you to bring her back over here so she could be like Oom Foo Foo in the Eddie Murphy com- uh, comedy. I don't know, man. I think, uh, well, look, I, I don't I don't really have a positive message. Eddie Murphy me. said this in 1984. Yes, dog. He got, a, he, got a, he got a bitch with a bone in her nose and brought her to America. He said, you Eddie Murphy, you that funny motherfucker. <laughs> Give me half, Eddie. <laughs> yeah man I mean I don't know I don't I don't think it gets I don't think it gets even I don't think it gets better at all 
I really don't think it gets better. I think those that learn, learn, and those that won't, won't. I I, I just, I don't know, man. It's just, what do you think is going to happen here? Hey, I'm, I'm just going to lean in. I'm a strong, articulate man who's building a media company in America. And, like, it's a bakery. And I'm going to eat all the cake that I want to eat. Uh, Marie Antoinette said, and so let them eat cake. Nigga, I'm going to eat cake, bro. I'm going to have crumbs all in my beard. You hear me? I'm going to have babies like Nick Cannon and Elon Musk. And I'm, hey, nigga, do some. If you don't like what I'm doing, do some. How many babies does Elon Musk have? Man, <laughs> <laughs> not enough. <laughs> not enough. Like I'm just I'm just going to exacerbate the thing until you be like, man, this is not okay. I'm gonna have 372 children. And you're gonna be like, why'd you do that? Because I believe in feminism. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.